Hello and welcome to a discussion on activity-based costing. After viewing this video, you will be able to define the terms associated with activity-based costing, state the purpose of ABC, compute the cost per activity for each cost driver, compute the overhead support cost per unit, and use that to determine the profitability of a product. The most common way to analyze profitability for the company is to use a gap income statement. This matches revenues to expenses incurred in the period and gives earnings for the period. This statement sorts costs by product and period to see the gross profit on products sold. However, some of the costs incurred to sell and support the sales of the product are included down below in operating expenses. Gross profit only considers the cost to make products, not the cost to support products and acquire customers. Because of this, Companies internally use a segment income statement. This statement assigns all variable costs that occur with sales, both product and period, and all direct fixed costs to each product line. The product margin line gives the profits for each product, considering all direct costs. The indirect costs are generally included in the common or non-traceable costs line, and they are assigned only to the total company. This is the closest product profitability that can be determined without allocating the common cost. Activity-based costing allocates other indirect support overhead costs that are incurred at the manufacturing facility, the warehouse, and the corporate office, and allocates these costs to products. The common method that is used to allocate indirect support costs is called activity-based costing, or ABC for short. After using activity-based costing, the company can get a much more accurate picture of the cost required to support manufacturing and sales of each product. The costs allocated using ABC are often referred to as support cost. The most common indirect overhead support costs that are allocated to products are manufacturing overhead cost, purchasing and warehouse cost to support production, customer service cost, and system and human resource cost. Any cost the company incurs that is caused by a particular activity can be allocated to individual product lines using activity-based costing. Activity-based costing allocates indirect cost to each product based on how much of an activity is required to support each product. A cost each time the activity occurs is determined by dividing the total cost by the total activity during the period. Activity-based costing is generally done using actual amounts. Management must consider the full cost when determining the profitability and pricing of each product. A flowchart of all activities is done to lay out the required activities and the cost of each of those activities that occur. The costs are grouped by activities and any areas of inefficiency should be addressed. There are two terms that are commonly associated with activity-based costing. A cost pool is the total of all the cost related to the activity. A cost driver is the activity that causes the cost to occur. Take a moment and review the common cost drivers. The cost pool is divided by the cost driver to compute the cost each time the cost driver or activity occurs. Companies often group cost drivers according to their function within the company. Unit level activities occur each time a unit is produced. Product costs are unit level activities. Batch level activities occur to support a group of products or customers. Product level activities are incurred to support products regardless of how many are produced or sold. Customer level activities are directly related to customer support or customer acquisition. Organization sustaining activities happen in support of the entire company and these will continue at the same cost regardless of the number of product lines. Organization sustaining activities are generally not allocated to product lines or products. Let's walk through the process of activity-based costing. The full cost of a product should include the cost of purchasing materials to make this product. The activities required to purchase materials is much more than just making a phone call or entering an order in the system. 
The first step is to identify all the steps in the process. Take a moment and review the flow of activities that are required at the company and incur cost when purchasing direct materials. The next step is to identify all the costs that are incurred to support the activity. All costs related to purchasing department employees and the facilities used by these employees are included in the cost pool. The next step is to identify the activity that causes these costs to be incurred. The activity in this example is issuing a purchase order. The total dollars in the purchasing cost pool are divided by the total number of purchase orders issued during the period. This gives the average cost every time a purchase order is issued. Let's add some numbers to our example. Assume the overhead rate is $10 per purchase order issued. The number of purchase orders related to each product is then multiplied by the cost for one purchase order to get the cost allocated to each product. $12,000 is related to product 1 and $8,000 is related to product 2. Traditional costing occurs when the company groups only manufacturing overhead cost into one total cost pool and allocates cost to products using only one activity. Period costs are not included in the traditional cost of a product. This method does not include all costs incurred to support the product when determining the profitability of each product. Activity-based costing includes all costs incurred to make and support the product, both product and period, to determine the profitability of each product. Many different activities are incurred to cause cost and more than one overhead rate is used. Including period cost and the cost of the product is not in accordance with GAAP. However, it is much more useful for internal decision making. Activity-based costing requires a lot of time and effort to gather the data related to each cost pool and each activity. It is much more costly than traditional costing. Detailing out the flow of activities that occur often uncovers inefficiencies that are buried in the processes. Activity-based costing allocates cost to each product. The total cost per unit is not used to determine the cost of goods sold for the income statement because it is a mixture of product and period cost, and this is not in accordance with GAAP and the matching principle. Traditional costing follows the matching principle. Let's talk through a quick example of activity-based costing. This company manufactures two different products with three different types of overhead cost. The traditional costing method of one overhead rate and one activity will not properly allocate cost to each product. The first step is to identify the cost drivers and the second step is to total the cost of each cost pool. The company must keep track of how many times each activity is done for each product. The company must then determine the cost that is incurred each time the activity occurs. This is determined by dividing the total cost by the total cost driver activity that causes this cost to get a cost every time the activity occurs. It costs $35 each time material is handled and $46.67 each time a service is provided to a customer. The cost incurred each time the activity occurs is multiplied by the number of times the activity happens for each product to get the total that is allocated to each product. This is similar to allocating manufacturing overhead under traditional costing, except more than one activity is used. The total amount is split between two products based on what is required to support each product. The total overhead cost for one product is determined by dividing the total allocated cost by the total number of units produced. The total overhead cost for one is added to the cost for direct material and direct labor to get the total cost. Let's talk through the steps required to allocate costs using activity-based costing. 
The first step is to identify the activities that occur repeatedly to make and support the product. Next, sort all the fixed overhead costs, both product and period, into cost pools related to the activities. Third, divide the total cost for each cost pool by the activity related to these costs and get a cost each time the activity occurs. Then use the cost per activity to assign cost to each product. After doing this, divide total cost by total units to get the support cost per unit for each product. After viewing this video, you should be able to define the terms associated with activity-based costing and state the purpose of ABC. You should be able to compute the cost per activity for each cost driver and use that to compute the overhead support cost for each unit. This will be used to determine the profitability of each product. Please log on to studymyaccounting.com. The practices you learn will give you examples of each of the concepts discussed in this video. Work the practice test to verify your understanding. It will help you a lot to write the answers out. Check your answers to the answers and explanations provided. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is very much appreciated.